Hello everyone. I am Dr. Neelam Singla. I have been associated with pharmaceutical sciences profession for the last 27 years. Currently, I have my own custom synthesis lab at IICT Hyderabad. We are engaged in custom synthesis to support pharmaceutical research. Due to an unprecedented upsurge of mucormycosis, that is black fungus disease in the country, a lot of generic companies are releasing their formulation of amphotericin B in the market to cater to this rising demand. As a pharmacist, I want to create awareness about the efficacy and safety issues associated with different pharmaceutical formulations of amphotericin B available in the market. Through this small presentation, I want to put across my point so that caregivers are made aware about these differences and the patient receives safe and effective medicine. Mucormycosis or the grimmer popular name black fungus has shown a huge spurt among COVID-19 patients. The causative agent is the fungal spores of a class of fungi called mucorales. Like most fungi, mucor produces millions of microscopic spherical dark hued structures called spores, which are dispersed in the air. Fungi is otherwise harmless, but when the immune system has been breached by another disease or due to medication, it invades the human tissues and makes body vulnerable to diseases called opportunistic infections. In immune compromised patients, the spores germinate to form long tubular filaments that can grow in the sinuses, into the bone and the bloodstream and can be fatal if not treated timely. Now, what was the prevalence and trends in India about this disease earlier? Medical literature shows that this disease has been prevalent and slowly rising for the past two decades in India. The estimated yearly cases are 70 times higher in India than the global data. Let us see about the cases of mucormycosis after COVID-19. As an aftermath of COVID-19, India is seeing an exponential rise in black fungus cases with 11,717 cases reported as per the official data on 26 May 2021. Gujarat, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh have reported the higher number of cases, yet some states have declared it as a notifiable disease under the Epidemic Disease Act, thereby making it mandatory to be reported. Now, what is the relation with COVID? So, in normal course, human body's immune system successfully fights such fungal infections. However, the treatment of COVID-19 patients involve intake of drugs which suppress the immune system response. Due to this, COVID-19 patients face a renewal risk of losing the battle against attack mounted by these organisms such as mucomycetes. Secondly, uncontrolled diabetes with COVID-19 can also predispose to the development of this disease. And thirdly, it is also seen that COVID-19 patients undergoing oxygen therapy in the ICU and prone to fungal infections because of the contaminated source of supply or humidification there. So what is the severity of this disease? The chances of recovery depends upon early diagnosis and treatment of this disease. Disease-related morbidity and mortality is higher if not treated promptly. Overall mortality rate ranges from 30 to 47%. Now coming down to the treatments. The line of treatment in black fungus is urgent and needs to be started soon as the presence of fungal infections is confirmed in the patients. It is to avoid painful suffering and mortality. 
Treatment is with antifungal drugs and in some cases, surgery is also done to scrape off the fungus. The most commonly used and considered the gold standard drug for the treatment of severe systemic fungal infections is antifungal drug like posomal amphotericin B. It is the first line of choice because of broad spectrum activity, low resistance and excellent clinical and pharmacological action. The second option is isavuconazole, posaconazole and other antifungal drugs. Now companies manufacturing liposome amphotericin injections are Bharat Serum, BDR Pharma, Sun Pharma, Cipla, Light Care Innovations and Mylan. Emergency approval is also given by DCGI, Tonetco, Amcure, Alembic, Gofake and Leica Pharma to ramp up their facility. Actually, the treatment for black fungus prolongs for four to six weeks and require 50 to 120 vials and the treatment is also costly. Let me explain in brief what is amphotericin and what is its mode of action. Amphotericin is a poly polyene antibiotic produced by fermentation of actinomyces Streptomyces nodosus. Mode of action. Amphotericin B has higher affinity for ergosterol, an essential component of the fungal cell membrane, than the cholesterol present in the cell membrane of mammalian host cells. It causes the formation of ion channels, leading to the loss of protons and monovalent cations, thereby causing depolarization of the membrane and altering the cell membrane permeability. This leads to the leakage of intracellular components that is potassium leakage, cell rupture and eventually it causes the cell death. Now coming down to which formulations of amphotericin B are available and what is the characteristic of this amphotericin. For nearly 60 years amphotericin B has been considered the standard of care for the treatment of invasive fungal infections. Amphotericin B is virtually insoluble, thus very poorly bioavailable. So it is given as lipid formulations. Amphotericin B deoxycholate, which is the conventional amphotericin and with brand name Fungizone. It was prepared with surfactant deoxycholate and it was the drug of choice for many years, but it, it was associated with adverse drug reaction and renal toxicity. To improve drug tolerability and reduce toxicity, different lipid formulations are approved by US FDA and are in the market in the United States. Amphotericin B lipid complex, ABLC, Amphotericin B colloidal dispersions, ABCD, and liposomal Amphotericin B with trade name Ambizo. It is a target drug delivery in which amphotericin is encapsulated into liposome and transfer of amphotericin B from the carrier to the target which is the fungus cell membrane. This formulation has sparing effect on the human cells so it gives improved clinical efficacy of this drug and it allows higher doses to be given. So these lipid and liposomal formulations are available. But the point to be noted here is this. These formulations differ in their structural, biochemical, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic properties. So their toxicity and safety profile varies. Now coming to the aim of this presentation. Different formulations have different safety, efficacy and tolerability profile. Now as the mucormycosis cases are rising and there is surge in demand of amphotericin injectable formulations and several pharmaceutical companies are engaged in this production. So I have few concerns regarding this. The concern is 
All the formulations are covered under a broad heading of lipid formulation or lyophilized formulation. Different acronyms, abbreviations and brand names under lipids are being used which leads to product inconsistency and confusion also. The second major concern is among the liposomal products only. The different liposomal formulation differ in their efficacy and safety and toxicity profile depending upon the process of manufacture, size of liposome and the lipid used. So it is the right time for the pharmaceutical regulatory authorities to address these issues. I have certain suggestions also at the same time. First suggestion is strong measures are required to clearly differentiate between lipid and liposomal formulation of amphotericin B as safety and toxicity profiles are different and if these formulations are clearly classified then caregivers can better manage the safety and tolerability challenges. Second is, as per the published literature, the components of liposome and the method of manufacture can influence the critical quality attributes of amphotericin B, thereby altering the safety and tolerability profile. Therefore, reintroduction of monograph on liposomal amphotericin B in Indian pharmacopoeia is needed so as minimum standards could be established for the products in Indian market. So in my opinion, a constant regulatory vigilance is necessary to distinguish these products in clinical use as it impacts the patient safety. Thank you. I think I have conveyed my point through this presentation and I am also thankful to Dr. Sona in designing this PPT with me. Thank you so much.